Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Terryville Congregational Church. Beautiful day with the sunshine today. We're thankful that we're here to worship God. No matter what's going on in your lives, a lot of us have ups and downs, twists and turns, and life can be heavy at times or difficult or challenging. But we can take a deep breath. I think it's so important when we come into God's house to take those deep breaths and to start in our hearts from that place of gratitude. That no matter what's weighing on your heart this morning, maybe you're thinking about your grocery list, or maybe you're thinking about uh, something you got to do this coming week, or you're thinking about a relative who's, uh, something's going on in that relationship, or maybe they're struggling with something. Whatever it is that you're it's kind of going through your mind, just take a breath, Start with gratitude, release all that stuff, because our faith tells us that we can do that, we can give that to God, and we can be thankful for the blessings that we do have in our lives. So we are thankful to be here, to worship God, we're thankful for the sunshine, we're thankful for the relationships in this room, and today, especially, we're thankful that we have the Scouts with us, and uh, we really appreciate you being here a little bit later in the service. We're going to hear a little presentation from them and some updates about what's going on in, in all of their work and good things that they do in the community. And for now, I'll have uh, Bob introduce himself and then we'll take announcements. Good morning, my name is Bob Grossoff. And we'll pass the microphones if we have any announcements or prayer requests. I don't need a mic. Or celebrations. I don't need a mic. Mm -hmm. How slowly is this coming? February 25th is a very special day for me. Oh boy. It means Christmas is only 10 months away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could expect this every 25th now. Uh, <laughs> right. I'd like to thank the outreach committee for the wonderful meal they served us last night. They went above and beyond. Thank you. Yes. Sir, we have a church back here at the Eli Terry Retirement Community, so thank you to the outreach team for that. I'm announcing this for Jeannie. She's still in need of a couple of soups for Tuesday's Lenten luncheon. Uh, please see her after church and sign up. Thank you. Yep, we do have our Lenten lunch this Tuesday here at our church, 1230. Uh, we had the first one this past week. They run every Tuesday throughout the entire season of Lent at all the different churches in town. And uh, the one we host is this week. Last week's was St. Paul Lutheran. It was the very first week of it. They probably had 70, 60, 70 people. But they have a little bit tighter space. So I would not be surprised if we get 100 people this week. So they're, being, they're very well attended. And um, every year we have a theme. You know, you get your soup, your sandwich, it's $5. Every year we have a theme, and this year's theme is to share mission work or community service that happens uh, within your church or within the community. Uh, St. Paul Lutheran talked about how they have a uh, baby ministry that they do, Small Angels, I think it's called, and they give out uh, baby items for any families in town that are in need, and they have all kinds of different baby items, which is a nice program they do. This week at ours, because we do so much with our local food pantry, which is what this wagon is about, reminds us to support our local food pantry, bring in your donations. Um, for our luncheon, we're going to have the director of the food pantry, Larry, uh, give, give the talk. So get to hear all about the food pantry, he'll give us an update. And then as we continue throughout the whole series of the Lenten lunches, every church will be doing that. They'll be offering um, education and information about the programs that they do that help people. So it's a nice, really nice theme this year. Uh, to learn about uh, community service and mission work. Roseanne? Yes, I like prayers for my son, Terry. He'll be going in for a real difficult surgery in about a week, and if everybody can pray for him, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. For Terry. We have others. Jake, did you have a hand? Morning. <clears throat> Just a reminder, our chicken barbecue is coming up on uh, Saturday, March 9th, uh, there, so if you need tickets, I'll be downstairs at the bottom of the Thank you. Yeah, chicken barbecue, and just to remind everybody, that is a very busy day. We, we want to support the whole town as best we can. Uh, Plymouth's doing Maple Festival that day, or earlier in the day. And then 
then also Patty, who's been very supportive of our congregation, who runs Patty's Place in um, Thomaston. She has cancer, and they're doing a benefit for her that same day. Uh, I think it's at the Thomaston Firehouse, 4 o'clock and, and later. I think it's like a pasta meal. So whatever those things you can support that day, we want to really spread the love. Diane? Struggling, so we're getting there one day at a time. Thanks. Continue prayers for Gary. Yeah. I'm glad he got home, though. You know, I saw all the place. <coughs> Home's better. <laughs> you know, I've asked for prayers for our son in law, Gary, a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, his first surgery had to be postponed because of the flu or whatever. And he's had it done this week, and it is major surgery. Okay. Well, another carry that we'll be praying for. My mom's birthday is tomorrow. presence 
We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that guides us every day. And we thank you that you hear us. We ask that you help us to trust you, to give our lives to you, and to know that in time you will speak to us the things that you want us to hear. You will guide us in those ways that you want us to be guided. So help us to have that patience. Help us to have that perseverance. Help us to have trust. Help us to have gratitude to know that we can bring it all to you. You will give us a lightened load. You will remove those burdens. And you will give us a glimpse of your peace. Be with us this morning as we welcome our scouts. Give them your blessing on the work that they do and their leaders and their families. And as we journey through this Lenten season, we think about all the sacrifices, all the acts of service, all the teachings, all of the preaching, all the ministry that came from Jesus Christ. We think about him giving himself time and time again through his life and through his ministry and certainly through his death. And we are thankful. We want to think about ways that we can draw closer to you in this season. We want to think about ways where we can make you more at the center of our lives. The world is pulling us, oh God. It pulls us in so many different directions. And whether it be social media or just um, all of the things that are in our faces all the time, whether it be TV, radio, uh, just media is so 24-7 nowadays that we are pulled. Everything's vying for our attention. Everything's vying for our time. Help us to keep you at the center. Help us to take those deep breaths and to listen for how you might call us to serve. In a world that wants to make it all about individualism, help us to look to our neighbors, to look beyond ourselves and to see what we might do to serve you to be the Christian people that you want us to be. As we worship you today, speak to our hearts. If there's something we're struggling with, give us your embrace. And in all things, show us time and time again what it means to be followers of Jesus. We lift up all these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together number 29.
time, I'm happy to again welcome our scouts and uh, invite whoever is going to come forward and share with us. And uh, we look forward to hearing some updates and how your group is doing. <coughs>
Seems like it'll start when it cuts out.
years take time to fix. <laughs> it might be that if you're on
beautiful day. Thank you for these gifts. Please bless them. Thank you for our scouts. Please bless them. Help us all to be servants of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Enjoy Sunday school. Today's scripture is from Mark 8, 31 through 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them? To gain the whole world and forfeit their life. Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy. Word of God, for the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. We always start with humor here. It's so important, I think, with the way our lives are. Sometimes we have heaviness. Sometimes we have difficulties, challenges. And... Winter, I mean, winter. <laughs> so you get grumpy sometimes, I think, and um, humor can lighten your load a little bit, I think, and kind of remind you to take a little bit of a breath. So we start with humor. Does anybody have any humor to share? I got a couple here that were handed to me. You want to share any of the ones you share with me on Tuesday? You're going to wait. Okay. <laughs> we got a comedian here, but he's going to come do a full act for us, hopefully in some future date. Sorry to put you on the spot, but I just really enjoyed your humor, and I look forward to it. I was hearing some of it at the Lentil Lunch this past week. Okay, here we go. Some cheesy jokes to give you a little smirk and maybe make your day a little brighter. If you groan because they're so cheesy, that's okay. Okay, here we go. Two little boys were at a wedding, and one of them asked, how many wives can a man have? And his friend answered, 16. Four better, four worse, four richer, four poorer. <laughs> Sometimes young people have the best like rationale out for stuff, you know? Okay, the people of Saudi Arabia don't like the Flintstones. But the people of Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. <laughs> Let's see. I think I got some on here I haven't used before. Let's see, did I tell all these? Oh yeah, I told these. Alright. Try to find a way in your life to uh, release some of these things that are heavy. Whether it be through humor, humor, that's just one outlet, right? There's a lot of outlets. Um, I always believe in deep breath and gratitude, which I've been talking about already through the service. Tons of prayer. Uh, I think the gift of music can be a great way for us to release some of the heaviness of our lives. Uh, of course, diet and exercise and all those standard things, get good sleep, all those things are good. But in, in terms of having those outlets that help us to kind of release, and I think God smiles on those things. 
Because otherwise things build up. And we don't want to have things build up. We want to have, be able to have those good outlets. Um, a great conversation with a friend. Um, a hug. Um, um, whether you're receiving the gift of music, just listening or doing, doing your own singing. How many people sing in the car? Sing in the car. Don't you sound good when you sing in the car? Oh, you're the best, right? You're the best singer. You're like, why well, have I never made it? Then. Everybody's a good singer in the car. And that's good, though. It gives a little smile to your face and kind of brightens your day. I think we need that because I think, I think the layers of life can add up. It's something I've been thinking about a lot, as, as many of you know. I had this cousin that died young. And ever since he died, I've been thinking about how things in life can add up so quick. And they can pile up. And if we're not, if we're not very intentional about the way we, we live, the way we spend our time, the way we spend our energy, um, the role that our faith plays in everything, if we're not so intentional about it, things can just pile up so quick. And uh, the heaviness, the heaviness will overwhelm. So I, I tell people all the time, it's so important I use this, this image, I use it at, at my um, cousin's funeral, and I've used it in here, and it's just this image that, that helps me a lot in my life, and the image is a wheel. It's a very simple image, but it's just something that helps me. I picture life as a wheel, and the hub, the center, is faith. And within that faith are all those things that have to do with faith, right? So gratitude and uh, belief in God and worshiping God and Christian community. All those things that have to do with faith. That's the middle. That's the hub. And then going out from that is the spokes. And the spokes, of course, connect to that rim of the wheel. And the spokes to me are all the resources in our lives. So your medical doctor, your mental doctor, your, uh, your exercise, your, um, what you enjoy for entertainment, uh, your diet, anything that's a resource, your, your, your mentors, um, like in scouting, your scout leaders, uh, your family, your friends, your peers, all those resources you have in your life are the spokes. Um, people that you can talk to and you can trust their advice. Uh, people you go to that are um, trained in a certain area. And my feeling is that you have to utilize all of that, otherwise the wheel doesn't turn. You've got to utilize it all. You've got to have that hub, but you also got to utilize all those spokes. I think they're there for a reason. I don't think God says, well, I'm the hub, you don't need any of that other stuff. No, I think God is saying, I'm giving you that other stuff. So yes, I'm your hub, but look at all these other things I'm putting right in front of you that are resources for your life, but you've got to utilize them. If you don't utilize them, that wheel's not going to turn. You can get stuck. And all of these things that happen in our lives can become overwhelming. And I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people that they, they have a hard time um, figuring out how to utilize all that. And I just try to talk about it a lot to, to say that it's so important to know that these things are there for you uh, for a reason. You know, if, if resources are in front of you, utilize them. That's what they're there for. You know, like for, for you students, if you have school guidance counselors, that's what they're there for. Utilize them. If you have scout leaders, that's what they're there for. Utilize them. You have um, your parents, that's what they're there for. Utilize them. You've got your doctor, that's what your doctor's there for. Utilize them. Um, so many times I think we want to do it on our own. We well, I don't need any of that other stuff. I'm just going to do it on my own. Well, you can, but I don't think it's ideal. I don't think it's ideal to try to do everything on your own. I think God places people and situations in front of us for a reason for us to be able to have interaction and be able to utilize these things because they help us. And, you know, that saying, it takes a village, I think that's so true. But we have to utilize the village. If we become isolated and individualistic and do everything on our own, we're missing out on that village that's all around us. And I talked a lot about that at my cousin's um, funeral because I think, I think my cousin and I think a lot of his peers um, were, were doing everything on their own. Very isolated, I think. And society has become so individualistic. Society has become so individualistic. Everything's through the phone. Um, you could just sit in your house or wherever. You could just be by yourself with your phone and you could do 
all kinds of things, isolated, isolated, individualistic, and selfish, unfortunately, selfish. And this is one of the things that Jesus is trying to talk to Peter about in this lesson today. It's natural for us as humans to get fixated on the human, on the human side of things. And Jesus is explaining to the followers that he's going to have to die. Of course, they don't want to hear that. Why would they want their leader to have to die? And they don't understand it. Uh, but Jesus is trying to get them to just, just listen to me. And, but before jumping off the deep end and, and getting all upset, and I need you to just listen. I'm, I'm trying to teach you. I want you to listen. I want you to be with me. But they're, they're so uh, thinking they know it all. And just like we do, we're the same. Uh, very individualistic. And so he has to kind of rebuke Peter in this moment and say, listen, hey, you need to just back up here, buddy. And he says, get behind me, Satan. Like, you need, to, you need to stop, you need to listen to what I'm saying, and you need to realize, where is your thinking? You're just thinking on the human level, and a lot of us do that. All society does it, really. And in a way, it's getting worse, unfortunately, which is why we have to be so intentional. We have to be so intentional with how we spend our time, how we spend our energy, and make sure that we're not <coughs> buying into an individualistic culture. It's so easy to do it. Um, it's been 10 years, I realize, since I've been on a plane. Anybody been on a plane lately? It's been 10 years for me. Everything is through this now. Every single thing's through this. I didn't know that. I didn't know that you have to go through this um, device and you have to raise your arms up like this. I was like, what are the, I'm looking ahead of me in the line. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> and they have to speak. I talk about it. You'll get home real quick if you haven't flown recently. Um, they have these footprint things, and you have to stand on it. I didn't know. I'm looking ahead. What are they doing? I guess I'm supposed to do this. So I get in there, and I go like this. And they're like, sir, you're not on the footprints. So I'm like, oh, I didn't know you had that. Oops. But the thing is, there's an option. You don't have to go through that. If they pick you, you can go on this side, and you just walk through <laughs> on the way down, I had to do this. On the way back, I had to just walk through. <laughs> I felt so special. <laughs> but the world is becoming more and more. Uh, you do everything through this. The problem with that is it feeds an individualistic way of living and an isolated way of living. And Jesus, I mean, that was 2,000 years ago that he was talking to Peter. And here we are, 2,000 plus years later, we're still running into the same issue. We want to think everything is human. The problem with thinking about everything is human, on human terms, is not only do we become individualistic, we become selfish. And then, in a society and culture like ours, it's very easy to become materialistic, um, just to sort of buy your way to happiness and fulfillment. And the culture feeds into that because we're, we're living sort of a consumerism type of culture. And before you know, you're in this sort of rat race of, of materialism, individualism, selfishness, uh, greed. And when is it ever going to be enough? I, I've told you all before, I know in my life personally, several, and if you want to know more details later, I can tell you, several multi-millionaires. Not one of them is happy. When is it going to be enough? You can pad that bank account over and over. When is it going to be enough? The people I know who are really happy and fulfilled are people that live according to this wheel I'm talking about. The faith is the core, and then they're utilizing the resources that are there, healthy resources that are there for them. And they are very generous, and they do a lot for other people in terms of service. <coughs> Scouts, I think, is built on that kind of premise, right? Service. Thinking about your fellow human being, not just thinking about yourself all the time. Thinking about your community, not just thinking about yourself. Thinking about skills you can learn, right, at a young age that will carry you all through life, right? You're learning some very powerful tools, resources, and skills that will carry you throughout all of life. A lot of society's not learning that. A lot of society just playing on their phone. A 
lot of students your age, you probably know them, right? All they do is play on the phone, right? People I know that are truly happy and fulfilled are thinking outside of individualism. They're thinking of other people, and they place their trust in God, and they want to try their best. Nobody's perfect at it. But they want to try their best to say, hey, I have this Savior, Jesus Christ. He modeled a way of living. He served. Uh, nobody was below him. He was willing to help anybody, regardless of their place in society. And he served and served and served, even to the point of death on the cross. And Jesus even says in the scripture today, those who really want to gain their life will lose it. That doesn't mean go out and put yourself on a cross immediately, beat yourself up and, you know, immediately, like, put yourself to death or anything like that. It just means, are you willing to serve? And are you willing to serve to a point where it might get uncomfortable at some point or another? Because service isn't always easy. Sometimes you've got to put in hard work. It might be hot outside or you might not, you know, like you guys go camping. It might not always be that comfortable, you know, if it's in the summer or something. I've been to that summer camp in the summer. It's like 95 degrees and you're in a tent with no AC. <laughs> now that's a fun thing, but I'm saying those kinds of elements will happen when you're out serving too. Sometimes you'll be out serving helping somebody that's hot. Or, um, you know, you're tired. Or you're hungry. And so I think Jesus is just saying, are you willing to serve to the point of where it might take a few sacrifices here and there? It doesn't mean try to go kill yourself or anything, but it means I want you to serve to think beyond yourself, beyond individualism. And to do it to the point to know that it might not always be that easy. Sometimes it takes a little bit of hard work. But the only way to do that, I think, is to get away from the human, thinking everything on human terms. If we think of the divine, we realize it's not all about us. There's a God, and that God loves us, and that God calls us into a life of worship, and service, and love. I said last week, and I'll, I'll close with this. I think we're all kind of looking for the same things. You know, when I, whenever I travel, I try to look around and notice things. And on my trip, I noticed, it seemed to me that everybody was kind of looking for the same stuff. Everybody wants love. They want to give love and receive love. Everybody wants to have a sense of belonging, uh, some kind of community they can connect with. Um, everybody, I think, wants some kind of forgiveness whether they're trying to work on forgiving somebody else that's done something to them, or maybe they're working on forgiving themselves for something, or um, maybe they've done something to somebody else and that person's trying to forgive them. I think uh, everybody is looking for that sense of hope in a world that has a lot of bad news. I think everybody's like, well, I need some hope. Well, we have the hope as people of faith. Our hope is right there in that cross. That you notice it's empty. He's not on it. <laughs> he died and then he rose again. That's our hope. And so with that hope, all things are possible. A lot of people in the world need to have that hope. They're feeling empty. They're feeling lost. They're feeling forgotten, neglected, alone. And I noticed on my trip, everybody just wants those basic needs to be fulfilled. And it can be fulfilled in a life of faith. But we got to get outside of thinking just on human terms. we got to look at the bigger picture. And if there's a God, which I believe there is, then it's not all about us. It's about how can I do something beyond myself. And it takes a little bit of work. And I think you all model it. I'm glad you're here. I've seen you model it. I want to see this program keep going. How many? I don't even know if we know the statistics on how many Eagle Scouts this program's produced, but I know it's a lot. Yeah, over the years, it's a ton. And you said three this past year? And we got one here today. Can our Eagle Scout stand? We're thankful for you. It takes a lot of work to do what these students do. And we, we appreciate you. We appreciate the leadership. And we ask God to bless you always. Amen.
knows what this is? Trombone. Correct. You know why I play the trombone? Because when I was your age, I looked like this. I was a big kid. They say, you're a big kid. You're going to play a big instrument. Thanks. So instead of Kumbaya, I figured the Boy Scouts of America March would be a better choice. It was written by none other than the March King himself, John Philip Sousa. Wrote well over a uh, hundred marches in his career from the late 1800s through the early part of the century, of last century. This piece was commissioned by a former, con former consul director, Charles Hart, of the Boy Scouts of America in the year 1916, over a hundred years ago. And it was dedicated to the Boy Scouts of America for their what well, Reverend Zach calls service and um, uh, and setting a good example for young boys only then, but of course now we're going to all genders in the Scout of America and that's very exciting. So this is the Boy Scouts of America March. I'm going to play it on trombone a couple of times and then we're going to try something a little wacky. <laughs> Seeing as how we have Boy Scouts, our Scouts here, you know, we want to be as resourceful as we can and we'll try to use our technology for uh, the better. So I'm going to play it a couple of times and then we'll try something a little bit, a little bit better. Thank you. 
Let's transition now into a time of prayer. We can bring anything on our hearts to God, and God does hear us. It doesn't mean we get instant gratification, but it means that we are loved. We'll never be alone. And God will, in God's own way and in God's own time, speak to us what God wants us to hear. Let us pray. Oh God, again we come to you this morning and we are thankful. We ask for your continued blessings to be with the scouts and their leaders and their families. Be with our congregation and help us to continue to do your will. Be with all of our town, especially in this Lenten season as we're sharing in these Lenten lunches, an opportunity to be together in fellowship to break bread together and to hear about one another's ministries, especially service work and mission work that helps other people. Every time we come to you in prayer, oh God, we're thankful, and at the same time we have needs. We have things that we want to ask for help with. And we have people and situations on our hearts. We want to take some time to lift up these needs to you, we want to lift up those that were named earlier. We ask that you be with Lois, be with Terry, be with both of the Garys that were mentioned, and be with Jay and family. We thank you for Carrie's birthday and all the other celebrations that are happening this time of year. We think about whether it be a neighbor or a coworker. People that we know personally that are struggling, maybe an extended relative. We think about people right here in Terryville and people right here in Connecticut, and then we start to also think beyond that. We think about people across our country going through different things, and then we think even beyond that, people outside of our country. We think of people in Israel, we think of people in Ukraine. There's places where there's a lot of difficult scenarios going on, and we don't have the answers to those scenarios. So we bring it to you in prayer. We place our trust in you. And if there is something that you want to put on our hearts, we ask that you put something on our hearts today. Maybe there's something you want us to do to draw closer to you or draw closer with a neighbor or, or reconcile a relationship or do something at our job or Whatever it is, maybe it's a new service project, or maybe it's uh, writing a letter to someone. Whatever it is, we ask that you tell us, and that you call us to it. That especially in the Lenten season, we would draw close to you. As we always do, we want to take some time to lift up our hearts to God and to name any other prayers that we might have on our hearts this morning. And we will do this by taking a time of silence. Let us pray together now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now respond to God's love in our lives as we will collect this morning's offering.
Use them according to your will. May they be a service to you and may they bring you glory. And bless all of our lives. Put us to work this week and throughout the Lenten season and always to be an offering for you in the world, to be people who shine your light, people who bring your love and the good news of your hope to so many people who are hurting and who need it. Help us to be disciples of Jesus. We ask this all in his name. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is in the blue book, pages 7 and 8.
hands and sing hallelujah, but in the Lenten season is to practice, try not to uh, say hallelujah or sing hallelujah because we're focusing a little bit more on Christ's sacrifices. So it's just a tradition we have, and some other churches have it too, of, of not really using that word hallelujah or singing it. However, we were talking about how it'd still be nice to do something to close the service each week for those that are comfortable holding hands. So what we're going to do in the Lenten season is, after I say the benediction, we're going to have a different song each week, but a fairly familiar song that we'll just sing one line of. So today it's going to be, he's got the whole world in his hands. So if you want to hold your hold hands after I say the benediction, and Paul's going to play it on the trombone, and we'll just sing it through one time, okay? May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. 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 Amen.